In this video, we're going to be training our first neural network. We've previously looked at how to define neural networks and also look at the autograd function. And we'll be using both of those two concepts in this video. So we're going to need a few different packages of MXNet for this. And because the API has been updated, uh, we may need to change the version of MXNet that we're using. But some of these APIs, we're going to need 1.2. So the way that we can update our version of MXNet is by calling pip. And so here I'm just uninstalling the old version of MXNet that was on SageMaker and installing the new CUDA version of MXNet. And so here we have version 1.2. Now that we have the new version installed, we can import all the extra packages. So the MNIST data set is a very common data set and that's for handwritten digit recognition. So we've got the digits zero to nine and we've got small images. We're 28 pixels by 28 pixels. Now this data set is really common, but it's also quite easy to get really good performance. So we don't need too much complexity to get up to 99% accuracy. And then it's hard to tell which models are good and which ones are bad and what methods are working. So we're using a slightly more complicated version called the Fashion MNIST dataset. And this contains images of the same scale. So we've got 28 by 28 images, and this is grayscale images. But instead of digits, we're looking at different classes of clothing. And we're gonna be classifying based on what type of clothing we think is in the image. So luckily for us, with Gluon, we can download this data set just as easily as we could an MNIST data set. And the data sets included in MXNet, we've got the CIFAR 10 dataset, CIFAR 100, MNIST, Fashion MNIST. So that Fashion MNIST dataset is what we're going to be working with. And you'll notice there's one argument to the Fashion MNIST dataset, which is train. And typically when you're training machine learning models, you split your dataset between a training set and a test set. And here we just want to load the training set to begin with. So that's why we specify train equals true. And this is a, now a Gluon dataset. And with a Gluon dataset, we can index. So now we're indexing the first image and label of the MNIST train datasets. So that's where we get the X, the image, and Y, which is the label. And we can just have a look at a few different properties. So here we're looking at the shape of the image, as I mentioned before. Similar to MNIST, we've got 28 pixels by 28 pixels and just a single channel. So we're looking at grayscale images. We're going to automatically download the data set when we initialize the Fashion MNIST data set up here. And then we will load in the images from disk. And when it's loaded in and parsed, we're going to have this as a NumPy int 8 type. Uh, so we're integers. And later down in the pipeline, we'll see that we need to actually do some kind of conversion. We've got some functions ready for that. And lastly, we've got a label, which in this case was label two. So if we want to map that back to the clothing type or clothing class, we need to have a dictionary that will do that conversion for us. And actually we define that straight away. So here we've got the text labels. Uh, we'll have 10 different types of clothing and the index will then correspond to the text class. So we've got two, which would have corresponded to the pullover. Here we want to plot the first six images and their corresponding labels. So we're just going to use matplotlib to plot these uh, images. And so here is an example of the data. So as I mentioned before, we might need to do a few uh, tweaks to the data set and we've got the transforms package to help us out here. Uh, we want to first make sure the channels and the height and the width are in the right order for our model. So typically when we load data from disk, we're going to get height, width, channel. But for our machine learning models, we want the channel before the height and the width. So we need to do this transform operation. And also we want to convert the data type from integer to float. And to help us do those two very common tasks, we've got a transform function in Gluon called toTensor. And in the, in the transforms package, we can compose lots of different transforms and apply them all to a, to a single image. So the first thing we want to do is the two tensor, and this is going to be inside a transform compose. 
you want to compose multiple transforms. And then the second step of the transform you want is to normalize that data set. And this is a very typical task where you want the mean value of your pixels to be zero and your standard deviation to be one. So we need to pre-compute the mean and the standard deviation for your whole data set to begin with. And then we can apply that to do the normalization. So here it's previously been worked out for us that the mean of the data set is 0.13 and the variance standard deviation in fact of the data set is 0.31. And using these values, then we can apply these this normalization to all of the other um, data values. We then specify where we want to use this transform. So as we saw earlier, the data set returns the data and the label. We only want to apply this transform to the data, to the images, because this, Im this is an image transform. So that's where we take the data set and we apply transform first, because we just want this applied to the data and they specify the transformer that we want applied. And so that will give us a new data set with the transformed applied. So a data set we can index. Typically we want to be working with batches uh, instead of individual images and labels. So we could manually create a batch ourselves by taking lots of different samples and indexing at different values. But in Gluon we have something that can do this for us much more efficiently and it's called a data loader. And so a data loader takes a data set and you can specify the batch size that you want to use with that data set. And it also manages the shuffling of data to make sure you have that randomization in your data. And one really good feature is the ability to parallelize um, the processing of your data set with number of workers. So this will spawn different multi-processes to do the reading of your data and apply the transformations. Uh, so it's really good for keeping the GPU fed with data. And typically you'd want to set this as the number of CPUs you've got available for your job. Uh, in this case, we're just setting it to four. Now we've got our data loader that's going to return batches of the specified size, so here, 256. We can iterate through the data loader. That's the way we interact with the data loader. So here we have a for loop and for data and label in the training data. So the number of arguments that are returned by the training data will match whatever is returned by the data set we gave to the data loader. So the data set returned the images and the label. And so the data loader that we're using, the corresponding data loader, will also return a data and label. But in this case, instead of a single image and a single label, we're going to have a batch of images and a batch of labels. So on our first loop through, if we just break and print out the shapes, we can see the shape of the data is 256 by 1 by 28 by 28. So we've got a 256 grayscale images of 28 by 28. And then because we've got 256 images, We've also got 256 labels. And now we do a very similar thing, but for the test set instead of the training set. We specify train as false. And very similar to above, we create a data loader. Some cases you'll use a different transformer for your test set than you would for your training set. So if you're applying different types of augmentation, for example, different crops and rotations, you may only want to apply that to your training data set. And here we've got basic uh, conversion to tensor and then normalization. And that's something we want to apply to both the training set and the test set. So we use the same transformer here. Now we define the model. So we'll have seen this model before in a previous video. And the only difference here is the way we're initializing the weights and biases of the model. Uh, the next thing we need to do is define a loss. So this is going to tell us how good or bad the model is. And the softmax is included in the loss function here. because It's slightly more uh, optimized if we can combine the two steps instead of applying the softmax at the end of the model and then applying the cross entropy loss. So softmax cross entropy is a function and then later we give that the label and the corresponding predictions 
And from those two values, it will work out a lot. The final part uh, of things we need to define before we train the network is the trainer. And so a trainer is a very handy class that helps us keep tr a record of all the parameters that we want to update as part of the model and specifies how we update them. So the trainer takes in a parameter dictionary. And so this is a dictionary of all the parameters that we want to update. And there's a handy method to actually collect all these parameters. Instead of giving parameters and collating the list uh, manually, we can just reference the net. So this is the network that we have created and defined and call the collect params method. And this will go through every single block of your network and look at all its children and collect all the parameters from all the blocks and subblocks. And this is more preferable than just looking at the parameters of the network because then you'll have to manually iterate and go through all the children yourself. But here by using collect params, it will do that for you. So this is quite a, a useful function. And then next we specify the optimizer. So here we're using stochastic gradient descent. So we're gonna define SGD. And then we can give the parameters for the optimizer. And the learning rate here, we just set uh, to 0 0.1. And now to our training loop. So this is the all important step for training neural networks. We want to iterate through our data set multiple times. So our very first loop is for epoch in range 10. This means we're gonna iterate through the data set 10 times. And within each epoch, we wanna iterate through all the batches. So we reference the training data loader and we get batches of data and batches of the label. So as we saw in the last video, we use autograd to automatically differentiate our functions. And here we open an autograd record scope and that's gonna record the gradient on all the values that we've attached um, the gradient for. So we haven't manually attached gradients to any of the arrays or weights here, but that's actually handled by the trainer. Then under the autograd record scope, we can start using our network. So we pass the input batch of data through our network to obtain predicted outputs. Then we apply the softmax cross, softmax cross entropy uh, loss function. And so we give it the predictions and we also give it the label. And that's gonna give us a loss for that batch. This is the thing we want to optimize. By calling loss.backwards, we're gonna work out the derivative of the loss with respect to all the weights. So then we know how to change the weights and minimize the loss. So for all the parameters we've got recorded in trainer, or we're keeping a record of in trainer, we can take a step so for stochastic gradient descent with a learning rate of 0 0.1, we're gonna take 10% of the gradient and the opposite direction, and then we're gonna change the weight space on that to reduce the loss next time around. And the last part is we pass through the batch size just so we can scale the, uh, the steps that we're taking. And for once in every epoch, we want to run our model against the validation data set. So here we're just processing the network on the data that's coming through the validation data loader. And now if we were to run this, we'll see the results coming through as we pass through each epoch. And this is being performed on CPU. Um, so we'd expect much better performance if we were to switch to GPU. And a couple of videos time, we'll see how to do it on GPU. It looks like the training has now finished. We ran 10 epochs in total. And as we went through the epochs, we see the loss decrease, the training accuracy increased, and we've also got the increase in the test accuracy as, as well. And the last thing that we can do is we can call save params on our network and specify the name of the file where we'd like to save the parameters to. We can call that, it will serialize all the weights and store them on disk. And in the next video, we'll see how we can load in the parameters that we've saved and perform inference using this model.